Hi guys, welcome to another video. On today's video I'm going to be taking a look at, um, there's a bit of a patch growing behind me here, I'm going to be looking at uh, cleavers or otherwise known as goose grass, sticky bob, sticky back, it's got lots of names. As kids we used to throw it at each other and it used to stick to us. It is a wild edible so I'm going to gather some up today and um, we're going to, I'm going to take some home and cook it up. Okay, so you can see I've, I've harvested quite a lot of it here. Um, main way to spot it is it sticks to anything. It does have um, little ball seeds. <coughs> it does have little ball seeds on it. Um, in my opinion, it's hard to, to gather enough, but it can be used as a substitute coffee, which has no caffeine. Uh, you can roast them and grind them and make coffee with them. But for today, we're going to be looking at how we can eat this, how to process it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try a little bit. It is edible, but because of the hairs on it, it doesn't really make it palatable. So goosegrass can be used as a um, herbal remedy. Um, it's really good at uh, detoxing your blood system. It's good for your lymph glands, and it's also good at um, clearing urinary tracts uh, and helping with cystitis. So what I'm going to do first is make a green herbal tea with it. So I'm just going to get the pot on, boil some water up and then make a herbal tea. So let's just bring that to the boil. So to make the tea, all I'm going to do is uh, take a bit of it probably too much but there we go just chop it up let's put it in my cup I found usually with um, with wild stuff it takes quite a bit more than than shop bought in quantity So about that much we're going to start with. It's not a rolling boil but the water is quite hot. So we're just going to tip some of that into there. And put this back on because uh, I'm going to have a go at blanching some as well. So actually I'll blanch that while the tea's brewing. As you all know guys, with green tea, you let it brew for a bit. So let's take, uh, just this is just more for edibility than anything. So uh, let's pop some in here. And then we're just going to blanch that for uh, for about 10 minutes in there. So what I've decided to do, guys, as it's steeped a little bit now, is just uh, see if I can just strain a bit of this water off. All right, guys, so taste test. Let's see what it tastes like. Tastes like um, it 
I would say, a vegetable that's been boiled. Kind of a celery taste to it. It's not unpleasant. But then again, I'm just drinking water that's been in. Um, as you can as you can all imagine, if you boil cabbage and then drink the water out of cabbage, it tastes just like that. Right, so next of all, I don't know if this board is heat proof. I'll tell you what, I'll use a frying pan. So I just want to try the edibility test. Is it edible after it's been blanched? I know it's going to be damn hot. quite stalky but again it doesn't really taste of anything even boiled maybe need boiling a little bit longer but even boiled it's quite a stalky some stuck in my tooth quite a stalky taste the texture should I say quite a stalky texture So, in my opinion, yes, it's edible. Edibility is, you're gonna to have to chew it a long time. Right, it's gone down. So yeah, blanching it, it does get rid of that kind of stickiness that was saying before it sticks to everything this stuff it's great so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try frying some right guys <clears throat> on goes the frying pan a little bit of oil Probably a little bit too much oil there uh, all we're going to try and do is just try and See if we can uh, fry some up, see how that goes. Should be using a wooden spoon for my frying pan. Right, so edibility of when it's been fried. Edibility is a bit better. All I can really taste now is the, uh, the cooking oil. A little bit seaweedy without the salt, I would say. Easier to swallow and digest. I think I had a bit of grass in that bit. Obviously because it's fried, it's got a crisp texture to it. But... It's a lot better fried. So what I'm going to do is chop this up. Finally, I'm going to put that in the frying pan. Okay, so all the things I've got here is mushrooms. Here's a chestnut mushrooms. I'm just going to slice some of them up. Got 
got a little tomato. This is where it gets messy. So I'm just going to quarter them. Slice them and quarter them. Chuck all that in. Also got some spring onion. And then what I'm going to do is get that all on uh, the frying pan. I've also I've obviously got my egg my egg mix here. And uh, yeah, let's let's crack on with that. Bit of oil in here just to get it going. Let's get that on the heat. Away we go, just got to periodically stir this in, make sure the mushrooms get cooked. So next I've got uh, just some wafer ham. I'm going to cut this up into strips. All that a good stir around. And last but not least, add some egg, egg and milk mix. Right, okay, so uh, I managed to also to pick some um, oxeye daisies. So I'm just going to add them into a little bit of rocket. Let's pick the heads off. The rocket's not wild, it's shot bought, but the daisies I managed to find on the way back. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, honey and mustard dressing over that. Let's give that a mix in. So, I think it's pretty much cooked through now. A little bit of scrambled egg in there as well. That's uh, how it tastes right so there we have it guys um, we've got a rocket with the uh, oxide daisy we've got this goose grass mixed in with tomatoes a little bit of scrambled egg uh, chestnut mushrooms a bit of tomato and some ham we can't forget to sprinkle a little bit of cheese over it So there we go guys, I want to try one of these daisies, oh yeah, it 
Although it doesn't look very appetising. It's bang on, guys. A little bit of a dainty there. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, guys, so there's nothing to stop you taking little bottles like this. I mean, I, I buy these bottles from Poundland, a bit of oil. Um, I keep brown sauce, red sauce, uh, salad dressing, <coughs> salt and pepper, all kinds of things in them. Um, there's nothing to stop you taking some raw ingredients out with you, your mushrooms, your tomato. Then you can actually prepare a meal that you've actually picked with your own hand, basically. All you're doing is adding a few ingredients. So I don't profess to be any kind of... Uh, Bush, bushcraft wild edible guru or anything uh, I just know what I know and hopefully you guys will learn from me just be careful when you are picking wild things um, make sure you identify it properly so that's all for this uh, video guys thanks for watching please like and subscribe press the little bell icon because I will be doing more wild edibles and medicinal plants and um, see you all on the next one guys I'm going to tuck into this lot